This is the first video of the Wizard Tower series. Uh, Wizard Tower is by Fat Dragon Games. Uh, should have 10 pieces of paper here, um, including a couple duplicates that we need to have. We're gonna start with these walls. One wall and one wall with a door. And we just wanna cut them out. Uh, remember this is, I'm considering this an advanced build, but after our experience with the dice, I think we can do it. Something to notice here. Look at that blue arrow. Different from the regular dotted lines that we fold on. Usually we fold away from ourselves on the dotted line. The blue arrows tell us that we want to fold towards us. That'll make a lot more sense once I'm done cutting it out and I show you how to score and fold it. So I'm using the other part that we haven't cut out yet as a guide to show me where those blue arrows are. And I know that I want to fold those towards us. So just like that, you fold them in towards you. And then we score the rest of it just as usual, score on the dotted lines and fold away from you. Now I've got both pieces cut out and folded. Make sure to remember to fold in the middle of that door. And now we're gonna combine them. So we'll do a test fit first. Looks like they line up just like they're supposed to. Beautiful. And now we'll get some glue and glue them together. And there we have the inside walls of the ground floor of our wizard tower. Now we need to fold these bottom tabs back in and put in the floor. In this case, I thought it was easier to just put some glue on the bottom of the floor instead of each of the tabs that I was going to connect it to. But use your table uh, as the flat space to help you get that in there right. And it's pretty easy to line up. Now we're going to start on some outside walls. You see that two in the bottom corner of the page. That means that we need two of these pages or four segments of wall altogether. So make sure when you're cutting these out, once you're done, you should have four wall segments. No blue lines on these, so we'll always be folding away from ourselves. We just score and fold as usual. Once we've got them cut and scored, it is time to glue them together. Remember, they're going to make a ring just like the inside walls.
Now that we've got an inner ring of walls and an outer ring of walls, we'll start on the top of the first level here. Cut and score and fold as usual. No blue arrows here, so just cut, then score the dotted lines and fold them away from you. Now that we've got that cut a little more manageable, we need to get rid of this space with the red X. So you don't want to fold it all the way, but bend it, take your scissors, and just cut a slit in part of the space that you're going to get rid of. And now use that to get your scissors in there and cut out the rest of this. Alright, that looks great. Now we're going to attach that top to the outside walls. So make sure the outside walls tabs are on the bottom. And we're going to connect the roof tabs, I'm going to call it a roof here, uh, on the inside of our outside walls. So make sure you get some glue on the tab and line it up with the edge of the top of your outside walls and you'll just continue all the way around. All right, now that we've got the outside walls and the roof attached, it's time to add the inside walls. As you can see, when we line it up here, always do a test fit. Those tabs on the top of the inside wall should fit perfectly right underneath that roof there. I believe it's easier to use the flat of the table uh, as a guide to keep all things flat. I'm gonna use some liquid glue for this because it is a little more difficult to get in the right position. Just follow along. If you do what I do, you can't go too wrong. Mm -hmm. 
never be afraid to use tools when paper crafting. See, I'm using the back of my scoring stick here to push all the tabs down uh, because it was a little tough for me to get my fingers in there correctly. And as you can see, they do kind of move around a bit. That's why I use the liquid glue. It takes a little longer to set so we have more time to move things into the right spots. And then once we've got it where we want it, I'm gonna put that glue there to weigh it down and let gravity help the glue stick. Now we'll start cutting out the bottom. As you can see, it's got some handy guides in there that will come into use in just a moment. Now that we've got the bottom cut out and this is looking like it is good, we are going to attach the floor. So flip it upside down. Watch how I fold these tabs. One in, one up, one in, one up. So that we've got four tabs for the bottom to rest on and four tabs to glue on top of the bottom and give it a really, really nice secure hold. We'll also put some glue in the middle there just for a little extra added hold. Go. Now add the bottom. Remember, four tabs under and four tabs over, and if they alternate, you get a really good lock there. So now we'll put some glue where we need those other four tabs to fold down and put it together. Remember, the table and gravity are your friends, especially when it comes to this piece. We can let it sit and dry for a bit. We are gonna start working on the buttresses. As you can see, we have four pages of buttresses, or eight of them. Uh, we need to cut them out first, of course. If you look closely, it doesn't look like there's any blue arrows, so this should fold up like regular. But first, let's cut, starting at these gray rectangles here. You wanna cut all the way down to the other part of the gray. See that white triangle? We wanna keep that. That's gonna be very important to putting these together. Keep that white triangle there, just like that. Even though it doesn't have a glue dot, we are gonna use it with glue to build this part. As I said, no blue arrows in this, so we will score and fold away from us as regular. Pay attention to the dotted line in the middle of that rectangle. That angle is very important to this piece. There we go. Once we've got it all folded up, we are going to cut out and fold the rest of them. See, that's how it'll fit together. Now that we have all eight cut out, we are gonna begin assembling them. First thing to do is put some glue on those little triangles I was talking about and glue them onto that gray rectangle. That's gonna create the angle at the top of this level that really gives it a lot of uniqueness. Once you've got that all glued together, creating that nice bevel angle, it's time to do the rest of them. Mm -hmm. 
All right, with all those glued into their angled shape there, we wanna make sure that that part goes on the top. Now the instructions told me to glue the top part first, and I'm gonna try that, but as you'll see, it doesn't really work that well. I have a lot more success putting glue on all the parts of the buttress that need to be glued than doing it this way, but I want you to see my process of trial and error. Remember, when we affix these to this, uh, when we put on the buttresses, we want to make sure as much of the white on the roof of our piece is covered as possible. That's a guide. And if there's a little bit sticking out, we can always go through later with a marker um, or, a, or a pencil and color those in. But we want to try to cover up as much of that white as possible. This is where our accuracy and cutting comes into play. So, I am making a pretty big mistake here. I'm wondering if you can tell the mistake that I've made. First, I try to put that on upside down. Then when I flip it over, if you notice where I have placed that, if you're cagey, you might notice I put it in a very wrong place. Think about it, see if you can figure out what I did wrong, and I'll reveal the answer in a moment. Okay, just one more buttress left to put in there, and then there's the door. Wait a minute. Where is the door on the inside? <gasps> oh, there it is. That is my mistake. I put a buttress where the door is supposed to be. So, I'm going to rimp off that buttress. Luckily, since we used the liquid glue, it's still not quite set all the way. It's going to rip a little bit of the paper, but that's okay because we're going to cover it up with the door. And 
and there's that beautiful door that I totally forgot about. If you notice, it is larger, but it's going to fit the same way that all those buttresses fit. So you just cut it out, just like we did the other ones, score and fold, glue that top angle into place, and then fit it right where that door on the interior is. With that angle glued, we can now attach it where it's supposed to go on the outside of the door. So put glue on all the spots on the door and glue it into place. See if it's just the same. These sides, because they're a little bigger, they do want to fold in a bit. So you might need to pull them out a little bit and finagle it, but I'm confident you can get it right into the right spot. Good thing I noticed that when I did. Now we've got the final buttress to put on and we'll be done with the first floor of our wizard's tower. And there we have it. The first floor of our wizard's tower by Fat Dragon Games. I really enjoy building this model. I'm hoping you're enjoying the advanced difficulty level, and I can't wait to build the next part with you.